Hi guys, today we're going to be upgrading uh, Dell Optiplex 7010DT or desktop. It's one of the four form factors, I believe four form factors that Dell have for this machine. Uh, it comes with a i5-3470 third gen processor, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, uh, DVD ROM drive, uh, no hard drive, and no operating system from the company that sold it to me. Um, pictured here is the SSD that I installed myself on it. Um, so we're gonna be adding uh, the GT 1030 graphics card to it. It's two gigs of GDDR5 RAM. Uh, pretty good entry level graphics card, uh, in my opinion. Here's another look at it out of the box. Uh, it's a pretty good looking card, actually. Uh, it's a nice shroud on it. This is the fan design. Um, actively cooled. They have, they have a lot of them that have passive cooling. Um, this one is the overclock version, so that's probably why the fans on there. Um, so here's a card out of the box. <coughs> like I said, it's an actively cooled card with the fan. Um, I preferred this one so I could try to get you know the most performance out of the card. Um, the GT1030 comes with the full size bracket on it, which is attached by this this extra like safety screw or something um they're gonna have to remove so we're gonna have to take the shroud and the heatsink off completely um to take that bracket off and switch it to this low profile bracket that we're gonna need to fit into the the optiplex 7010 it's uh it's not as wide as the mini tower versions um so i already took these out but these are the thumb screws that hold the bracket on um and then we're gonna go ahead and take the four screws that hold the shroud and heatsink and fan and all that off. Um, fast forward through this a little bit for you. Uh, so <clears throat> once you get those off, you wanna be careful. There's a wire that's connecting uh, the fan to the actual card. And we're gonna take out this small screw um, that's holding on the full size bracket. Um, it's not necessary for the low profile bracket that we're gonna replace it with. So we're going to go ahead and replace the four screws that are holding the shroud and fan on. Um, you want to do these um, diagonally across from each other when you're putting it back together. It just kind of keeps too much pressure for me to put on one side. Um, <clears throat> when you're working with any type of electronics, this is a good way to reattach something um, without putting too much pressure on any one corner or side. Uh, so now we're going to attach the low profile bracket. Um, all you want to do is pretty much take the bracket and line it up uh, with the HDMI and DVI-D uh, ports. Um, as you can see, the low profile bracket is quite smaller. And if you can use this to kind of imagine the size difference between a full size tower case and a desktop, I guess, case is what Dell calls it um, in this size. It's not as small as their small form factor case though so it's easy to get those two mixed up uh, so just line up the holes um, and make sure it's not <clears throat> covering any part of the port or anything before you screw the thumb screws in you almost can't mess this up at all um, another thing to recognize is that the way the bracket goes in the uh, bottom part there should be next to the uh, PCI connectors and the top part that bends over a 90 degree angle like an L should be toward the top, away from the PCI, PCI connector. Uh, so just take your thumb screw and you can do this just with your hands, tighten it up. Um, so these two are really close to this uh, DVI port, DVI-D port. So what I did was once I got the thumb screws in as tight as I could by my hand here, and as you'll see in a second, I'm gonna just tighten it up on one side. I couldn't get the one on the right side here as tight as I wanted it. The bracket was still moving a little bit. So I'm gonna grab just a, just a adjustable wrench that I have just to tighten it up a bit. It's still shaking. And once that's tightened up, um, you're good to go. Uh, the screw that you took out, you want to save this screw and you also want to save the regular size bracket, the full size bracket. 
I'm going to put them back in the box that you have it with or something like that in case you have to return the card or sell it. So then we're going to go ahead and open the back latch and remove the bracket um, from the back of the case. Um, this, the first PCIe X16 slot is where we're going to put the card in. Um, this is the one, I'm not sure if the one at the bottom is X4 um, or full X16. Um, but if you're just throwing one card in here, I don't think this board supports SLI or anything crazy like that. So you just want to put it in the top slot here and you just want to line up the notch there. There's only one little notch to make sure you got it right. Um, also, the PC was still running when I started to put the card in, but I did turn it off before I actually uh, fully inserted the card into the board. And you just want to close the bracket there. And now we're going to boot it up and see if we can get anything uh, on display here. Uh, so, fan for the cooler is running. Oh. Oh, it's running. Okay. And the fan on the card is spinning. It's kind of hard to see, but it's spinning. So that's a good sign. All right. Uh, here we're going to just take a look to see what we got. Okay, so we did get an error. Unsupported video configuration detected. Action is required. Don't be scared of this. Um, pretty much what's going on is I still have the DisplayPort connector connected to the motherboard originally when I was testing to see if the PC would boot properly before I even put the card in. Um, what we need to do is take that out and we're going to connect to the monitor here with the HDMI which is what's supported by the video card. Um, so I already have one uh, tied in here so we're just going to plug that into an HDMI connection. And then we're going to take the other end and take that and plug it into the back of the graphics card. So you want to go directly into the graphics card here because all of your display is going to come to your graphics card now. Nothing's coming off the motherboard. I'm going to get that in and make sure it's connected properly. And we should be good to go. So I did power it down before I did that. Now we're going to power it back up to so we'll see if everything is working properly. So, yep, CPU, fan, cooler, spinning. I'm going to switch to the input for the HDMI. See if we get anything here. Nothing yet. So, uh, the graphics card, the fan is spinning. Once again, it's kind of hard to see with that card in the way. Uh, there we go. Okay, Windows booted up. And voila. Alright, everything's working good here. This card does come with uh, DVD-ROM, I believe it is. And I do have a DVD-ROM um, in this computer, but um, there's only two SATA cables that came with it, and one of them was going to that. So, I wanna, I'm going to use the SSD, as you see here, but I'm also going to put in a, a storage drive so I took the SATA cable from here and unplugged the power just just because it's pointless without that data SATA cable coming from it so this is the storage drive I'm putting in here as well which is why I needed the other SATA cable from the DVD ROM drive um, this is a 500 gig WD blue I'm just gonna use it for storage media games that type of thing or whatever games we can run on this this card um, the bracket does have a connector on the back for a 2.5 inch drive, but I don't have the screws for it, so we're going to leave the SSD in the bottom there. Um, <clears throat> one thing just to point out real quick, uh, so when you add a drive to your PC, or this one, I don't know why, it didn't pick it up, didn't recognize it, I thought it had like a bad save cable or something at first, I had to shut down the computer, I tried to restart it, and Windows, I guess, got an update in October where it has like a save state now, so if you restart it, it just opens everything up as the way it was and the, the drive doesn't come up so shut it down and manually restart it and you should be good to go if you're using it i don't know if it's just this computer or not uh so here we'll look at uh, some of the key features that the card has um i pulled them up on evga's support site um and you can download um you can download the software from there if you want you don't have to 
for the cars to run. You do want to get the drivers from them. I mean, you don't have to get the drivers from them. I would recommend getting the drivers from them. Um, but overall, uh, I got another video coming up with a little more detail into the car. But I think it's a great car for the price. It's about 70 bucks I got on Amazon. Um, the computer was 60 so for, you know, $130, I got a PC that can run at least eSports titles. And I can do some video editing on it. So it's a pretty cheap entry level machine here for less than 150 bucks. Alright, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more tech and gaming related content. Follow me on IG and Twitter at TDHD Tech. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.